What's going on guys? So today we're going to be talking about the Canon 5D Mark IV and is it still worth it in 2019? So let's jump into it. I did a video last year on is the Canon 5D Mark IV worth it in 2018? And my answer was definitely yes, I love this camera. But it's a year later and is this camera still worth it in 2019? So this camera's a workhouse. I'm actually shooting this video with it right now. This camera's been around the world with me. You know, sand, snow, rain, super hot weather, super cold weather. Since I live in Toronto, Canada, and it's winter time right now, and this camera just keeps going. It's amazing. I love it. It's been beaten up. This camera is a beast. Now that the Canon R is out, a lot of people are debating whether or not to get the Canon R or the 5D Mark IV. And even though they're both amazing cameras, I'm personally sticking with the 5D Mark IV. And this camera has Wi Fi built in, so I'm actually using my phone as a screen recorder since this camera doesn't have a flip out screen and I don't really want to buy an external monitor because those can add up in price real real quick like I think the small HD one is $500 to $700 when I could just use my phone for the most part and I think it works perfectly fine. The Canon 5D Mark IV has dual card slots, so if you're shooting something that you need a redundancy for, like say you're shooting a wedding and your card corrupts and you only have one card, then you can't really go back and be like, well, the card corrupted, so can we redo everything that we did? Because that would be weird. At least if you have multiple copies of your footage or photos, then if one card corrupts, you always have the backup other card. So your paid work will always be secure because you have multiple copies of your footage, which is always a good thing, backups. I personally still hate the EVFs. I'm more of an OVF type person, which is more of the classic. A lot of people love the EVFs, kudos to them. For me, I personally do not like it though. It still captures some amazing photos and video straight out of camera. Canon's color science is one of the best. It's superior to a lot of these other camera manufacturers. The skin tones look amazing. And if you're looking for like a true tone look and colors to your images straight out of camera, I will say that the Canon 5D Mark IV is kind of heavy. It is a bigger camera than, you know, like the A7 series of camera or any other similar camera. It is quite a bit heavier, but I do like the heaviness. It kind of takes a little bit of the camera shake away when you're shooting. Yes, it doesn't have in-body image stabilization, but the lenses also have it. And for me, when I'm doing photos, I don't really miss it as much. I don't really need it. But for video, it would be nice to have, but it doesn't have it. But I don't think it's a, a crazy deal breaker. The weight of the camera and lens combination, I think, is almost perfect. It gives it like a nice balance to it. And it kind of gets rid of all of the little, little jitters that you would have with a smaller camera. So autofocus, the dual pixel autofocus. So the dual pixel autofocus is by far the best autofocus system that I've personally used and it's super snappy, snaps into focus, it keeps focus, face tracks perfectly and it's not too jittery when you're going from foreground to background maybe and it doesn't look unnatural. It's very smooth and very natural looking, kind of like if you had a personal focus puller helping you out. And since we're on the topic of autofocus, I find really, wow, someone's cutting down a whole tree. Since we're on the topic of autofocus, I find that once it locks into focus, it keeps you there and doesn't really hunt, doesn't really focus on the background, the focus back on you. It just snaps into focus and keeps you in focus. Even if you're using like a low aperture lens, like the 35 1.4, that I'm not a big fan of the 4K Kodak in this camera. I mean, it's super, super high quality. Bit rate is super high, but the file sizes are massive and that 4K crop dough. Hate that 4K crop. It's not the greatest. It's still usable, 
don't get me wrong, but I personally would love to have a full frame 4K Kodak and I would like to have the option to decrease the quality instead of filling up like a 64 gig card in a couple minutes because that's absurd. Nobody has storage like that. I will say though that I do love the 4K crop factor in some aspects because it gives you a different focal range. You know, it'll add that 1.6 crop. And then on top of that, if you wanted to drop it into a 1080p timeline, you could even punch in even further essentially giving you bigger zoom than you actually have. I've used it a couple times in a couple of my videos, which is kind of nice to have, I'm not gonna lie. Or if you just shot 4K and then down resed to 1080, you're gonna get a higher quality image, which is better if you're looking for the maximum quality. I've never had the 5D Mark IV overheat or cut out recording when I'm filming, even using the 4K, which is more than I can say about some other cameras. But let me stop talking and go home because that sound is super annoying and it is freezing outside. I don't know if you can see my breath, but it is freezing out here. So let me stop talking. All right, so my last thing is, is the Canon 5D Mark IV worth it in 2019? I personally think that it still is worth it. I mean, a lot of camera stores are having deals on this camera. So if you can pick one up that's on sale or pick one up for a really good price, I think it'd be more beneficial without the lens and just pick up the body. I think it's still worth it. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because it does help. I'm on the road to 6K. See you in the next one. Peace.